And then there is John Cook now in his 20th year. Four straight trips to the national semifinals, four times a national champion, a member of the ABCA Hall of Fame. In his 20th year at Nebraska, I talked to Coach Cook yesterday. He's been to the regional round 19 years. I said, what happened in 2011? <laughs> and he immediately went on about, oh, that Kansas State team, we came out. I mean, he remembered it like it was yesterday. <laughs> Coaches he never forget the losses. And Robin Amo, one of the things that is fun about her, just a few years now taking the helm for the great Dave Shochi for, for Hawaii, is she shows a lot of emotion. When her team makes a play she's not so happy with, you'll see it. And when they make good plays, there's that line shot we were talking about, mixing and hitting with much more range for Lexi Sun. Several Hawaii fans in the UW field house. That was Brooke Van Sickle, 5'9", redshirt junior, out of Battleground, Washington. Uh, like Rasmussen, a transfer from the University of Oregon. And Hawaii is on the board first in this best three out of five set regional semifinal. That's going to be a net violation. Unfortunate break. Emmer, Amber Igidi, excuse me, 6'3", freshman out of Baton Rouge into the top of the net. And Paul, that's really unusual. The Hawaii teams talked about how IGD has been eating those up off that tough serve from Yosia. A rare error where the ball is just sitting there waiting for her, that is IGD, to make a point off the overpass. Swing off the right side down through the block. And Brooke Van Sickle again registering a couple of early kills. Hawaii 26 and 3 overall, as mentioned, the number 12 seed. Nebraska the 5 seed. They finished tied for second. Three way tie with Minnesota and Penn State at 17 and 3, 27 and 4 overall. Jazz sweep going high left side. And we talked about the balance now of Nebraska. She has been a revelation in this her junior year out of Topeka, Kansas. Last year she hit 205. This year she's hitting 282. Had 17 kills in the second round against Missouri. And Coach Cook said, look, she has to be huge. If we're going to make a run deep into this tournament, need Jazz sweep to be big and in December she tends to rise to the occasion. Nebraska's road through the first round that they hosted in Lincoln beat Ball State three sets to none. A very good Missouri team that really battled the Cornhuskers three sets to one. Give you Hawaii's resume in just a moment. Beautifully controlled dig and off the edge of the block and down. Maddie Kubik as you mentioned Karch the Big Ten freshman of the year. 6-3 out of West Des Moines, Iowa. And in the last match, we saw Holland hands for A&M using those hands. That's a shot that Kubik has uh, mastered her, herself as hitting off that left side, which is often a smart thing to do because the bigger blockers in front of you are the middle blockers, not so much the, the wing defenders. Nice up by Sun. Pretty good bump set. Kubik's going to get an opportunity smartly off the top of the block. Nebraska ahead in the point. Or at least they were. What a good swing off the left side. McKenna Ross, who's mostly known for her ball control, 5'10 senior out of Aliso Viejo, California. That was a rip through the seam. There is Bailey Choi, 5'9", graduate transfer senior from Honolulu, but transferred from the University of Utah. Look at this, Lauren Stiverens hitting out on the left side. Lauren Stiverens, a returning All-American, probably hadn't done that since she was in high school. Look at this. We saw her training that yesterday. We practice. did, and kind of <laughs> scratched our heads then. <laughs> Baylor will take on the Washington Huskies, so it will be according to form, one versus eight tomorrow for a spot in the national semifinals. Congratulations to the Huskies. And Texas, we're being told, is down a set against Louisville over on ESPNU. 
Knuckles trying to get after that defensively, and the ball falls. Kenzie Knuckles, 5'8", freshman out of Yorktown, Indiana. The freshman libero for John Cook and the Cornhuskers. Best three out of five sets. First four sets to 25 points. You know, a couple surprises, Paul. It's, a lot of people felt like, uh, that Kentucky was playing some of the best volleyball in the nation. Washington taking them down, and then Texas at home losing the first set in this round of the regionals. Nice read by the libero for Hawaii Aquino. Good first contact off the black block deflection. And again, really good swings in transition. And you pointed out Robin Amo, a three-time Olympian, very emotional on the sideline. And another thing impressive about this Hawaii team, both their left sides in their current offense, which is very different than what they started the season with, but both Van Sickle and Ross were really recruited almost as DSs and as Liberos, and now here they are carrying a big offensive load. Props to um, Helvig and those two players. Everybody's been very flexible. They had to be after the injury to Rasmussen on September 12th. Hawaii showing you their trademark. They are really a good ball control team. Digging in, of course, first contact serve, receive high flat, and nice track. Chase that time by Matty Kubik, but Nebraska unable to follow up. And a really good start for the Hawaii Rainbow Wahinis up 7-5. to five. Both of these teams, Karch, look at the resumes, both in the NCAA tournament for the 38th time, 35th wow. regional for Nebraska. This is some real pedigree. You can see two blockers for Hawaii that time. IGD, the 6'3 freshman out of Louisiana. First team all Big West. Stuffing, a first team All-American with some help from Van Sickle on the outside. Yeah, a lot of help. I think Van Sickle got most of the contact there, even though she is undersized at 5'9". She puts up a very solid left side block. Nicklin Hames, who last year made history, becoming the first freshman ever to start at setter for Nebraska. Stiverings will go to the sideline and give way to number 43 defensive specialist Haley Densberger out of Malcolm, Nebraska. Played 32 matches last year, 16 aces on her stat card so far on the year. Tipped over the top. That ball was on the floor. Densberger arguing that it was up, but that is to no avail. We might have a challenge, though. Right in front of us, Karch, what'd you think? I thought part of the ball touched, but of course that's in live time. Oh yeah, that ball's yeah, on I think the floor. The touched. Yep. It's hard for the defender to know. She got her hand under the ball. She doesn't know what she can't feel. That part of the ball's on the floor. Yep, and notice who was hitting. Noreen Yosia. Uh, Yosia. What's impressive about her, Paul, is she's my kind of old school player. When she's in the backcourt, she's a setter. When she's in the front court, she's a hitter. That's old school 6-2 offense. You very rarely see that, but the Hawaii team feels like they have to keep her on the floor. She's so valuable with her leadership and some of the other intangibles. The replay system, of course, in effect throughout the course of the season and into the tournament. Can challenge ball up or down, which is what we're looking at right now. Foot fault on the service line and three meter line. Ball off the blocker or off a player, a net violation or not. And three meter line attack. Three challenges per team per match. If this should go the distance, five sets, then each team gets an additional challenge. Uh, maybe it's closer than I at first thought. Mm. I, I think some part of the ball is on the floor. See there, boy, it's between those two it's, frames. <laughs> it's a very finely sharpened spatula. <laughs> exactly. she, slid, she slid that thing under with no problem at all. But as you've said before, you have to have convincing, clear evidence to overrule the call. And if any part of that ball actually did touch the floor, even if 90% of it is on a hand, it's still down and it leads yeah. to a kill for Hawaii, and that's I, the call. I think that's the right call. So John Cook and Nebraska now have two challenges remaining unless this match goes the distance. I was watching a match. Coach Cook challenged three times against Minnesota. He was out of challenges in the second set exactly. against Minnesota. 
And here we have Yosia at the line. Remember, she brings her team so much. One of the things we saw Nebraska practicing yesterday was watching out for this, this serve. She brings a lot of heat, causes trouble. Perfect pass by Kubik. There's the high flat shot you were talking about, Karch, quickly into the middle, and that's the second net violation. IGD may be just a little excited. We saw another freshman. Tiana Rush really struggle for Texas A&M in the first match. It's a big moment. Yeah, but IGD, that set was also too close. And when it is, IGD has to recognize it, stop her swing, and just keep the ball in play. Good tough serve from Hames. That is a good out of system set by Aquino, the libero, but missed out of bounds. Our first look at Hanna Hilvig, six foot two freshman out of Lidingö, Sweden. That is a suburb of Stockholm. Recruited by one of the great players of all time at the University of Hawaii, assistant coach Angelica Jungquist. Combination play off the block and out of bounds. There were six big hands that time in front of Van Sickle. Nebraska so well coached. They were not surprised by that combination play at all. A little bit of a lucky swing, but they had exactly the block that they wanted. Here is Van Sickle. Hawaii continues to lead now by two. Nice pass by Knuckles. Oh, Alexi Sun showing some of that diversity of attack. Off speed up into the block. This was a noodle. Thumb down. Amo was not happy with her defense on this play. It's not, if you read it, it's not that difficult a play to make, but it was deceptive enough to keep the Libero Aquino off, off balance. Held big, number 17 in black, ripping that ball inside the block and out of bounds. Hawaii, I gave you Nebraska's road. They beat Northern Colorado 3-1 and then beat an outstanding team, the University of San Diego. We thought San Diego should have been a seeded team. They beat them three sets to none. Very impressive. Yeah, University of San Diego, what a season they had. They won the WCC. They beat BYU twice, but BYU gets the seed. USD doesn't and has to go play on Hawaii's court for that second round match. The season recap for the Rainbow Wahine talked about their outstanding record both on the year and in conference. Nine newcomers, five freshmen, four transfers, and a couple of them playing a very big role. Nice read. Uh oh, that's tight. Sweet, just able to knuckle that ball over. You're not going to get. Weak, weak sauce to the floor against Hawaii. And there was nothing weak about that. Jazz Sweet absolutely crushing that ball inside the block. Tell us the difference between weak sauce and strong sauce. Well, weak sauce, <laughs> yeah. any ball that you put over softly with two hands, especially on the overpass, you got to bring some serious heat to end that play. But you also have to stay out of the net. Earlier we saw a Hawaii player net that ball set too tight really good adjustment by the freshman again she was the big west freshman of the year and getting that delivery from noreen yosia who was the mvp of the big west and remember that hawaii team had to make a major adjustment they were playing a unique system with no libero on the floor they were shuttling setters and middles early in the season before conference started and then rasmussen got injured and finally they started playing with their libro, Rika Aquino, plus Coach Amo needed her to be more vocal. She felt like she was being too quiet in the early part of the year. Nothing quiet about Robin Amo, and what an international career she had. A member of the University of Hawaii Hall of Fame. Three-time Olympian, a silver medalist in 2008 in Beijing. Good touch by Hames. There's Aquino on defense. And that ball, was it off the block or into the antenna? Off the block. Yep, that is a really good swing once again by Yosia, 5'11", senior, able to put that ball away from Torrance, California. She's crafty. Remember, she sets in the backcourt, but now she is not the setter. They have two setters on the floor, and she's not performing the duties while she's in the front court. So she's going to be a right side blocker. Expect Nebraska maybe to try and set at her set out that way, but no, they go the other way to Stiverance. Good block touch. Chance here out to Van Sickle and missed it just out of bounds. 
That ball just a little bit wide. Is Hawaii doing a really good job on the All-American Stiverns right now, or is that connection not quite what it should be? Well, we saw it in practice yesterday. I thought it was struggling a little. So, but in that case, I thought I actually thought that set was the right height, the right tempo, but there was a really good touch, what we call a soft block that neutralized the attack of Stiverns. Van Sickle again, undersized by a long way at five foot nine. And Hawaii off to a wonderful start here in Madison, leading 15-12 over Nebraska. See the number of national semifinals. This is the 39th tournament. It is only Stanford and Penn State that have been in each and every national championship. And between those two schools, 15 titles. Perfect pass by Kubik. That's the connection you're looking for. Lauren Stiverin, six foot four, redshirt junior out of Scottsdale, Arizona, first team All American last year, and have another wonderful season. This 11 kills on 24 swings against Missouri. Well, I sure like that route that Stiverin's ran. Remember, Van Sickle got a good touch on her before, so Stiverin's changed the route, stayed inside the sideline more. That is a beautiful response by GD. They really need the 6 3 freshman. She had a wonderful year, Karch. Look at the numbers. Two kills, hit 359, and was first team all Big West Conference. That is a wonderful get by Robin Amo out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Battling her own teammate for freshman in the year in the conference yep, with yep. Anna Helvig. Helvig was first team as well. Oh, what a pass. Maddie Kubik. We'll talk about it throughout the course of the weekend, but she has to be one of the favorites for National Freshman of the Year. Speaking of freshmen, what a season. And the thing that's so impressive about Kubik is she stays on the court and she's a primary passer in almost every serve reception formation. So she's carrying a huge load in every phase of the game, unlike a more specialized player like a middle or a front row opposite. That ball falls, and now Nebraska back within one. It was 15 to 12, the Hawaii Rainbow Wahinis at the opening media timeout. Maddie Kubik, 6'3", freshman out of Iowa, was considered the number four overall prospect coming in. And she, as you pointed out, Karch has had a really, really strong all-around freshman year. A serve goes down for Nebraska. Aquino was making the strong chase. Rico Aquino, the libero for Hawaii, but give Nicklin Hames the ace. She had 24 coming in. 3 nothing run by Nebraska, tied at 16. Good read by Gide on that set that was too low. And Lexi Sun in transition, number 11 in white, six foot two junior out of Encinitas, California, began her career at the University of Texas before transferring to Lincoln. What a nice high swing by Sun last year. She probably would have buried that ball low, just an inch or two above the tape, but instead she goes at the weaker blocking target. Helvig is so impressive for the Wahini down the line, tied at 17. Has played some for the Swedish national team. She's got three kills on five swings, and this one, pressure against a good block. Here is Van Sickle again. The transfer from Oregon was born in Hawaii before growing up in the state of Washington. Nice touch by Helvig. And going high flat. Yep, you got to change your trajectory a little. The two outside hitters, Van Sickle and Ross, are 5'9 and 5'10 respectively. And maybe even shorter than that. I'm, I'm not <laughs> sure. They're sure. wearing That's three pairs listed. of socks. <laughs> but give Helvig huge props. That's her six foot two frame and she gets on the floor. When you're not involved in the block, you have to crash toward the action. And she's the one who made that play possible for Hawaii. Jazz Sweet off to a very nice start. Four kills on seven swings. Both teams hot offensively. Hawaii hitting 367, Nebraska 346. As Sun goes back to the line, you can see how she's improved. First team, all Big Ten. Perfect pass again. Dug by Knuckles down the line, and Helvig 
Hawaii was hitting some balls yesterday at practice, and you and I were sitting here going through our notes, and we heard this. <laughs> <laughs> There's a different sound. There's a different when somebody sound. Somebody has that heavy arm. Shank pass. Oh, nice save by Hames. Legally saved on her side of that imaginary line. Helvig is in some really good spots as an off blocker. What a Great cover. cover. Up into the block. Callie Schwarzenbach at six foot five, the sophomore out of Kearney, Missouri, able to tap that ball down. Remember that play. Momentum block this time by Jazz Sweet. And watch Ross on that second one. She was purposefully trying to fling the ball into the block and get it back, but it bounced in an area where her team couldn't touch it. And Knuckles, number two in the off color jersey, signifying the Libero, misses that 20 to 19. Very tightly contested opening set. Bailey Choi back to serve. And remember, we haven't seen any of Rasmussen yet. They were had big hopes for her to carry a huge offensive load at the start of this season. Look at the quality of contact off to the block deflection. High flat shot. That is another really good swing. Was that Ross once again on the outside? It was indeed number 20 in black from Alyssa Viejo. And timeout called by Nebraska now trailing 21. To 19 and remember yesterday in Nebraska's press conference when the local press of uh, the local press from Lincoln mind you asked coach Cook a number of questions about Hawaii. He said look they're going to play Hawaii volleyball just like they did under Hall of Famer Dave Shoji who was their head coach from 1975 to 2017 a thousand one hundred and seventy nine wins. They're going to dig they're going to scrap they're going to use all kinds of shots and they have done exactly that and they're passing the ball and yeah. their contacts off block deflection are really high quality. It's all about ball control both when the other team is serving as you see here couple that one moved the setter around a little but also when the other team is attacking nice quiet form by McKenna Ross there you don't want to see a lot of flailing movements you just want to see arms get behind the serve and put present a really a solid platform that's angled to where your target is. And this is against year in year out one of the toughest serving teams in the country. Nebraska like all good teams really emphasize serve and receive but Nebraska is usually a really dynamic serving team from the line. If you weren't with us earlier Wisconsin the number four overall seed very very impressive indeed. Wonderful balance Sydney Hilly every bit of the Big Ten setter of the year as Wisconsin has advanced to play the winner of this between number 12 Hawaii and number five Nebraska Washington the Huskies have moved on congratulations to them they will play Baylor tomorrow note the time for Eastern time on ESPNU our match is scheduled for six o'clock Eastern time and then we'll move to Austin and then out to Stanford to close out and fulfill fill the bracket as to who will be in the national semifinals coming out of the timeout got a nice matchup here Maddie Kubik on the left against Yosia on the right but instead they go to Stiverens and that's playable off the scoreboard off the scoreboard legal as the ball as long as the ball stays on your side going away from the matchup you talked about jazz sweet as advertised I've been following Nebraska's box scores we had them earlier in the year against Purdue and Lincoln she is must be along with Lexi son one of the most improved players in the Big Ten Conference yep. hitting 280 still probably a little less consistent than she, than she and the Huskers would like her to be but they need her to be huge in this tournament. Oh that's going to be a back row setter with Hawaii system their setters are always in the back court and a ball that was passed just a little bit too tight tied at 21 opening set best three out of five for a spot in the regional finals and Hawaii calls timeout. Timeout called by Nebraska and want to remind you the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship coverage continues with the national semifinals Thursday December 19 at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN for more information on the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship visit NCAA.com your home for all 90 
NCAA championships. Back with three-time Olympic champion Karch Kirai. I'm Paul Sunderland. A look at the other side of the bracket. What do you think about Stanford, Utah to start things off, Karch? Utah is a dangerous team. I, they played at such a high level against BYU in the second round. Beat them three straight sets, 25 to 15. Also, Utah had Stanford down 14-11 in the fifth game at Stanford in their regular season match, but Stanford just came back. So Utah, very dangerous. Cincinnati with Jordan Thompson, a big upset over, over Pittsburgh, and Penn State really coming on. Probably, uh, I, I think, better than their 11th seed. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And then, of course, at the bottom, you see Texas playing Louisville, and that's Lauren Stiverin's sister playing right now. Her parents had to split cities, so only her dad is here. I think I got that right. Her dad's here, and her mom is in Austin after the the, op the parents were at the opposite daughters for last weekend's matches. And, and to update you on the Texas match over on ESPNU, Louisville won the opening set 2019, Louisville leading in the second. Remember a couple of years ago in Austin, BYU took Texas to five sets when they were hosting as well? Here is Megan Miller, defensive specialist on to serve, tied at 21. Another good pass from Hawaii, though, leading to an easy kill because they can set the middle. That's one of the, that's the biggest reason why you want to have a pass that's not far from the net and in the middle of the court because you can set your middle. And that's the set that happens fastest so it's the one with the least blockers in front of it and the most efficient. Both teams are passing serve very well. Nice block touch. Hawaii ahead in the point. They're going to get a free ball. Oh, that was tough. Van Sickle right on the sideline. A little miscommunication. You're right. Yosia was running in. Stiverens right side goes off speed smart choice but opportunities missed by Hawaii Yeah, opportunities missed especially the last time the ball was on Hawaii's side They end up having to send over a free ball really like what Stiverens did there middles don't always have to hit hard And she took something off of it That part of the court the donut in the middle is going to be open on her slide swing Van Sickle again off of Micklin Hames. You like that matchup? I sure do. Both the matchups when you have Hames up there. Now, it doesn't mean that Hames is an awful blocker. It just means that she's shorter by a good six inches for, from Lauren Stivens, the middle. So you want to attack that outside blocker who doesn't get as many stuff blocks as many good touches. Nice pass by Kubik. Lexi Sun ripping down the line, but Kubik. Off the net touch deflection, Maddie Kubik, number 10 in white, just was calm and beautiful pass. And Tied at 23. Remember, got a win by two. And Kubik's been doing a lot of that all season long as a freshman. Here is Densberger. IGD able to tuck that ball down inside Schwarzenbach, so it'll be set point. Number one for IGD and the Rainbows. Coaches Cook and Reyes frustrated. Schwarzenbach, uh, Schwarzenbach all over that, but didn't get her hands across the net in time. And it'll be timeout, Nebraska. Callie Schwarzenbach, I talked to her at practice yesterday. The 6'5 sophomore out of Missouri was all Big Ten freshman team last year. She broke her thumb about a month ago, and it is in a serious cast. She did not have surgery. If she doesn't play with it padded as it is, it's on her right hand, then she might easily break it again and have to undergo surgery. But it's, it's really affected her. I mean, you'll see when she comes out of the timeout, makes it very, very difficult. You can see even with a water bottle, she, she's not using her right hand. So she really must be hurt. Which is unfortunate for her because, of course, she's right-handed, so you lose a lot of control on your, on your attack. That was a good story we told last year about the recruiting tip came from a farmer's daughter to a farmer to another farmer to that farmer's daughter <laughs> and Danny Busboom Kelly who's now coaching at, against Texas at Louisville is coaching at Louisville in the Austin regional but eventually connected the dots and so Schwarzenbach ends up at 
the Huskers. And Louisville looks like they might be up 24-21, at least on the screen we have. They have won that set. Louisville now up. Two sets, Two to, sets none to none over Texas. That would be a huge upset. Texas into the regional round for the 14th straight year. And remember, there's there's that cast that makes it. When you attack a volleyball ball, you want to be able to spread your fingers and make a big, uh, as much surface area as you can on the ball. So Schwarzenbach not able to do that with the limitation on her on her thumb. And just to uh, bring it further with regard to Texas and Louisville, Louisville unseated out of the ACC, Texas, the number two overall seed. Set point, man, missed out of bounds. I'm surprised Hawaii decided to have Yosia serve from the other exactly. sideline instead of from where she's most comfortable, especially out of a timeout. I was looking for an area one. All of a sudden, she was over an area number five. I think I would have had her serve from the comfort zone. And now a poor pass. Chance for Nebraska. Good set. Given Lexi Sun, who goes high flat off the inside hand of the middle blocker. That was a wonderful set and swing. By the freshman, Maddie Kubik. She does everything for Nebraska. Maddie Kubik just stepping in after that dig and dishing that ball up in a perfect spot. As you told me, Karch, five feet off, five feet inside, and let the hitter do the rest. Exactly. Lexi Sun can go get that. And last year, Lexi Sun probably would have hit that lower, maybe right into the forearms or elbows of the middle blocker for Hawaii. Instead, she hits it high off the fingers and drives it right out of bounds for the kill. Set point now for Nebraska. They have already saved one set point from Hawaii. Talked about Maddie Kubik with very, very good reason. We talked about Hannah Helvig. Here is a pretty good list, we think, of candidates for the national freshman of the year. Certainly Grace Froling was huge, and in fact, Hawaii ended her and her teammate season for USD, but what a conference-winning season USD and Froling had in the WCC. And uh, Maddie Kubik and Helvig, maybe there are a couple of the uh, the front runners there, but certainly uh, Skylar Fields, whose team is now down 0-2 in some serious and trouble in the regional. Washington State had a really nice year. Magna Hella Shova uh, was the freshman of the year in the Pac-12 conference, and there you see a, a comparison. But Maddie Kubik, look, you got if you play six rotations. Which Helvig does not. You play six rotations. You got to pass serve. You got to play defense. You got to set off balls that we've just seen. She is just a wonderful all around volleyball player in her first year at Nebraska and in the Big Ten. And that's why I give her, I guess I would give her my vote, but I would give her the edge in that because she stays on the court full time and contributes to her team in every single way, including in the difficult technique of receiving serve. Set point for Hames in Nebraska. Yeah, she's put everything or all around play on display in this opening set. Tight pass. And Kubik, but a net violation. Kubik with a dig, but Schwarzenbach with a net violation. Schwarzenbach wearing number 26, had 11 kills in a hard fought win in Lincoln last week against Missouri. This has been an interesting rotation for Nebraska they actually have their opposite jazz sweet helping pass a little and she's left handed but get it hit on the left side here she comes. Oh finding a small hole in the block. What an improved player jazz sweet a clutch kill now with half a dozen. She's leading the way offensively now for Nebraska. Huge just the way coach Cook said they needed set point number two. Helvig off the top of the block and Lexi Sun cannot make the play defensively. How impressive is Helvig as an attacker against this big block? She just jumped right in front of IGD to take that ball and free IGD up to be the first option, the quick hitter. And here comes Rasmussen 
as a blocking sub. I don't know if they'll take her off on this, but she, they much, they improve their left side block against Sweet. Don't set that way. Kubik is roofed by Helvig on the outside with some help from Skylar Williams. Set point number two for Hawaii. That's a big Hawaii block. Helvig's hands way across the net. Boy, really like this substitution from Robin Amo. Critical time, take the opening set over the top of the block. Hawaii chasing. Sweet Whoa. again, what a dig. IGD down the line. Boy, Jazz Sweet again. What a gutsy and smart play by sophomore setter Nicklin Hames. That just got to go by feel. That's gut. Or maybe Jazz Sweet was out of gas. <laughs> and smart to do it that late in the rally. Defense, the defense is just thinking about getting back into position. Tied at 27. Rasmussen's on. Cubic, good block touch. Rasmussen stuffed straight down. That ball was a little low and a little tight. Her adrenaline has to be gushing right now. Rasmussen was out with a serious ankle sprain from the 12th of September to December 6th. And that's such a difficult thing to do, Paul. She's been out the whole game and had to take a swing. First one, cold. Set point again, for, and that'll do it. Van Sickle tried to go off speed out of the middle back. What a well-played opening set, but the number five seed Nebraska Cornhuskers come out on top, take it 29-27. Outstanding opening set between Hawaii and Nebraska here in Madison, Wisconsin. Welcome back to our coverage of the NCAA tournament. Really good balance, Karchke ride for both teams, but Jazz Sweet, Right about the middle of that set, she she almost got unstoppable. Yeah, and she doesn't normally have that much success on the left side of the court, but they are now trusting her and leaving her. And she led them with six kills. That's exactly what they need. They get plenty of production from Sun and Cubic on the left side and Stivrens, but they need a right side threat. And Sweet provided it in that first set. Do you remember last year and earlier in the year, Capri Davis, who's taken a leave of absence from the Nebraska Cornhuskers, would come in just to play in rotation number one, and then Jazz Sweet would come back on. Capri Davis not with the team. Jazz Sweet leading them 6 of 15. In the opening set, Nebraska hits 326 as a team. Hawaii 280. Lexi Sun was very solid as well. Four, four kills, seven swings, no errors. But they're showing how much trust they have in her. When Absolutely. Setter, Nicklin Hames is in the right back. It means Sweet is in left front. That's where that's their, where they are right now. But sometimes they run Sweet all the way across the court. They have her sprint across and try to hit behind the setter. We'll see what, uh, but so far it's been working for them not to do that and leave Lexi Sun to hit behind the setter. Underway, that ball served out of bounds by Nicklin Hames, who might have made the play of the opening set. Remember the contact on two during that long rally? Both teams were playing spectacular defense. How thoughtful, taking care of business in her own hands. Hawaii champions of the Big West Conference in their 38th NCAA tournament. Remember, coming out of that timeout, Hawaii had Yosia not serve from that zone. Oops, somebody netted. Yeah, that's going to be a net violation. But talk about that underhand delivery from Nicklin Hames and the swing. Perfectly delivered set down the line by Lexi Sun. Five kills on eight swings. Yeah, look, you get to this level, Karch, rally scoring, the margins are wafer, wafer thin. It was wafers we ate at that Indian restaurant <laughs> last night, wasn't it? Good wafers. Yeah, a little onion kulcha and garlic naan. Good serve here by Lexi Sun. Again, first team all Big Ten. Maddie Kubik was freshman of the year. Lauren Stiverens was first team, along with Nicklin Hames. Yeah, Sun does a nice job with that serve. She hits it right down the line, and she jumps well 
and uses that jump and her length to hit the ball almost down over the net cord. 24 aces coming in to this weekend's competition, the regional round of the NCAA tournament. Very good defender as well, almost two and a half digs per set. Jazz sweet again. Don't see a lot of left-handers. Is, is it an adjustment? I mean, they've been scouting Nebraska for a week. They know it's coming, but uh, sometimes as a blocker, a little difficult to get in front so far. Jazz sweet on fire for the Cornhuskers. Four years ago, the NCAA Volleyball Committee changed the format of the tournament. The top four seeds in the national bracket host. What an advantage, but something earned. Baylor, Texas, although Texas is in real trouble right now. Stanford Cardinal, they are the number three seed. And Wisconsin is number four. Nice block by number 25, Callie Schwarzenbach. That's a block Schwarzenbach missed near the end of the first set. That time shooting her hands across the net more quickly. She was in the right spot again. Great story you reminded me of from last year. The farmer next door to the 150 acres over there to the guy plowing the field over there. Said, well, there's there's this kid that's six foot five and, and she's really darn good. You ought to take a look. Well, and Coach Cook loves to recruit kids of teachers, coaches and farmers. They all know a great work ethic thanks to the family and the, the way they're brought up. And they just know in terms of uh, understand more about service to others and how to make it about the team instead of an individual. Rasmussen is back on now for Hawaii trailing 6 1 to open the second set. Good touch by IGD. That's a very nice swing. Now remember you can play the ball below the waist. Maddie Kubik who's been doing a lot of things with her versatility. <laughs> That's a legal play and a rule change that was instituted several years ago. Yeah any part. Little desperation. She was leaning left. And then the ball caromed off the block. That's all she had was a left foot. Rasmussen we mentioned that Van Sickle a transfer from Oregon as was Rasmussen. And then that ball through the block and down and away from Rika Aquino, the 5'5 redshirt junior out of Honolulu, the outstanding Libero, wearing the white jersey for Hawaii. Hawaii, the 12 seed, Nebraska at number five. Nebraska has gone on the road. They have not hosted a regional the last two years. They were in Minnesota last year, beat Oregon, and the year before, at Kentucky off the edge of the block and out of bounds. Nice swing by number 20 McKenna Ross. Ross and Van Sickle so smart. They rarely have a height advantage almost always at a disadvantage to the block. So they got to figure out other ways to get the ball. The rally terminated and one of them is to hit that ball off those fingers. She'll probably aim for it there. Didn't need them. You know, the corner. you know who else is showing some good all around volleyball is Amber Igidi, yeah. the middle blocker. Remember the dig she made in the opening set and then this bump set? That is some nice volleyball for the freshman. And remember the dig we looked at at about 23 all, 22 23 last week against Northern uh, Colorado? Yes, Northern yeah. Colorado in the first round. And they. They could have lost that second set, if, uh, first set, if she didn't make that that save, and they did lose the second set. So she saved them from going down 2-0. Number three, five foot six sophomore out of Alexandria, Indiana, Megan Miller on to serve. Tight pass. Kubik is blocked. Helvig on the outside with some help in the middle from Skylar Williams. Haven't talked a lot about Williams. She had one big kill in the opening set. 6-1 junior out of Bellflower, California. Only played six matches last year. This year, first team all conference. Huge improvement. Boy, both teams passing the ball very, very well. Aquino nice all over that. Oh, you've got to set that ball. Both teams playing good volleyball, creating an offensive rebound, another swing. 
Yeah, earlier in the rally, Oregon had another touch at their disposal, but Rasmussen just, sorry, Oregon, I, I, I meant Hawaii they, had another touch. They, yeah, Oregon. formerly Oregon. <laughs> there exactly. you go. They've got there several go. players transferred from Oregon. But Rasmussen had another touch and, and could have set or hit or didn't use it. Good pass. Came right back. Nice cover. That's going to be a double contact, a little miscommunication. Remember, Rasmussen hasn't been out on the court for such a very, very long time. And this isn't the first injury. She had to sit out last year with back surgery. And talking to the medical staff at the University of Hawaii, they talked about historically she has had multiple, and I mean multiple, ankle sprains. And this one kept her out almost 10 full weeks of the season. Her final season of college volleyball, if I'm not mistaken. They list her as a redshirt junior, so she does hopefully have one more year. Missed 20 matches, so it is throwing her right into the deep end when you miss almost the whole regular season and your first action is in the NCAA tournament itself once you come back. Sun is stuffed. Nice reach by Williams. These two middle blockers, Williams along with IGD. Junior is Williams, freshman IGD. They are a nice combination. Yep, and if you have a choice and you're Lexi's son, you probably want to swing a little less at Williams and a little more at the right side blocker, you see a Off speed, Stiverens comes up a little bit short, and Hawaii right back in this opening, I should say second set after trailing, 6-1. If you're just joining us, Nebraska and Hawaii right to the wire, a little bit of overtime in the opening set. Nebraska needed three set points to close it out, 29-27. Shank pass by Kubik, a rare mistake by the freshman who's been super solid. 10-9. Timeout is called by Nebraska. We'll step aside. Hawaii, no way. They're going away. Stanford, the defending national champions, Stanford and Nebraska have shared the last four or have won the last four. Kentucky, my pick to make it to the national semifinals, has been eliminated by the Washington Huskies. Wisconsin has advanced. You see the schedule there. Baylor and Washington at 4 Eastern time tomorrow on ESPNU. Back in Madison, Paul Sunderland with three-time Olympic champion Karch Kira. Hawaii back within one. That ball might have been out of bounds. With Williams, a net violation to bail out the Huskers. Nebraska, some question marks, maybe some cracks in their confidence. They, I wouldn't say they struggled against Missouri, but they really had to work to pull out that match three sets to one last week. Missouri and that was beat, at home. Yeah, and they they were they had a lead. I think it was 24-20, and all of a sudden it evaporated in one of those sets. They ended up winning that, but didn't have as much of the killer instinct as they would normally want on a home court. Rasmussen off the edge of the block and down. You can see Coach Cook, Coach Reyes really frustrated. They were talking in the last time out about how often the Hawaii hitters hit cross body. That is, if you're a right-handed hitter, you, you, your arm swing goes across your body and you hit it back, in that case, down the line. They want their blockers to get in front of that more. Yeah, there is Coach Reyes on the knee and John Cook behind him in his 20th year at Nebraska, both very, very frustrated right now. And Hawaii is playing beautifully. Rasmussen rips down the line, but well out of bounds. That's the same swing we were just talking about, and it was open. There was space, but missed it by a good three feet. You don't want to aim right at the sideline. Got to give yourself some margin for error. Aim two feet in. Out for 10 weeks. And then when she did play last week in Honolulu in the first two rounds, did not play. It was spot duty and yeah. did not play a lot even then. So still shaking off the rust. And how do you stay fit after all that time with a lower leg injury? Lexi Sun tapping up into the block, and then IGD and Rasmussen. That's something where you just don't have a lot of continuity and playing time together. Well, remember in practice yesterday, we saw them working on that yes. for about 15 minutes. So I like the aggressiveness of IGD, but she took an easy play right out of the yep. lap of Rasmussen as off blocker. So that's the downside 
of having your blockers be really aggressive and come down and throw themselves all across the floor. Nebraska's lead is 13 to 10, working short. And that's going to be a net violation, either called on Schwarzenbach or Sweet. We might have a challenge. They're saying there was no net violation. Coach Reyes is asking his blockers if either of them felt them, their arms touch the net. Well, let's take another look. That is clearly a net violation on Callie Schwarzenbach. And That's I can't, why I can't bail her out. I got to throw her under yeah. the bus. That was not on her cast. No. <laughs> See, that's the problem. <laughs> We've learned this with the USA team. They're great. Our players are great when a hitter hits a ball and it has a micro touch on the opponent's block. We're not very good at all when we netted <laughs> and we think we didn't. And so the same thing's happening right now with Nebraska. <laughs> They're telling their coaches they didn't net and their coaches are going to see in a second. Are you kidding me? <laughs> they ream the net. That was Schwarzenbach's right arm. And she told her coaching staff, she probably didn't feel it, but that's why you can't be as aggressive on challenging those nets because a lot of times players don't feel it for some reason. Well, and this could be a big factor. That I mean, just burned yeah. a challenge. And now they now Nebraska has one challenge remaining, and that was an obvious net. Yeah, and it was a waste because there was no challenging that play. Schwarzenbach just gave them the wrong information. On a Helvig, the freshman of the year in the Big West Conference was very, very solid offensively in the opening set. She's back up front wearing number 17 in black. You'll see it with a jump serve handled easily. Yeah, really nice pass by Kubik. And Rasmussen cuffs that ball out of bounds. Tough decision as a coach, isn't it? Yeah, and Rasmussen's yep. going to come right back out, replaced by Brooke Van Sickle. Hawaii tried to go a little bigger, and Robin Amau, really, really good body language over on the sideline because they're still going to need Rasmussen. Yeah, we were both thinking the same thing. I love how they're showing some trust in Rasmussen, giving her some chances, but it is hard to click. Oh, some really, some confusion on the Hawaii side. They don't have a right side blocker. They all stacked over here. What a break for Hawaii here as Kubik had an easy swing and missed it they well still long. They don't know where they need to, yeah, assistant need to go. Okay. Assistant coach for Hawaii. Well, let's see. How many matches? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is the 30th match of the year, but sometimes a little refresher course isn't a bad idea. Van Sickle back to serve. Hawaii trailing one set to none and 14 12. And Schwarzenbach missed it out of bounds. That's where the cast on her thumb, she yeah. just cannot snap over the top of the ball. And it also means you can't spread and have five wide fingers to wrap around the ball for more control. Working on Lexi Sun, Van Sickle with the ace, and we're tied at 14. We saw an earlier ace down the line on Cubic. It clearly Hawaii likes that serve from what we call zone five to zone one. Expect that to happen again at Lexi Sun. Yep. Three nothing run for Hawaii. Nice bump set to Jazz Sweet. Cubic going off speed. Nice choice getting McKenna Ross a little out of position. We're in number 20 in black for Hawaii. This is a nice adjustment by Cubic. Watch McKenna Ross is standing in a normal off blocker position, but she wasn't ready for it to come that sharply. Coach Amo really working the sideline. That ball off the top of the tape. That is a break for Hawaii as IGD, the young middle blocker, will go back to serve. She has been really impressive. Shook off some early match nerves and, and really looks engaged. Good serve. Another ace against Lexi Sun. Engaged indeed. Yeah, she stays on the floor, but she's extending her arm and hitting it flat, giving it some some zip, and that allows it to drift more. Another serve that causes trouble. Chance for Hawaii. They kept the ball on Yosia and Helvig into the cross court. Nicely dug. 
That's way outside the antenna, but nice what an shot. angle by Sweet. What a read by Helvig. What a brilliant point on both sides of the net, ended by Matty Kubik. Going high, going hard, going flat. Yeah, we saw a GD jump in. You can see your lower left, Texas wins the third. They're still alive, down only two sets to one now. Texas pushed almost to the limit. They were pushed to five sets. The fifth set wasn't close. The fourth set wasn't close. Very good team from UC Santa Barbara last week. Rip down the line. McKenna Ross again. Ross hits only 173 on the season. She doesn't look like somebody who hits under a couple of bucks. That's the matchup they would want to use. An attack is going at Haynes, number one in white, the setter for Nebraska, the weaker blocker of that combination. Ross, if you're wondering, an outstanding passer. That's why she's such a vital part of this team. Nice swing again, McKenna Ross, getting herself out of the way as the off blocker, but then misses Long in transition. And Nebraska, one of their blockers, that's a strategy you could use when you know Hawaii's hitters are going to be aiming for your hands. You just pull them down and let the ball fly out of bounds. Tied at 17. First set was deuce as well. Perfect pass by Aquino. Oh, what a better block. Stuff straight down by Stiverens. Wow. Stiverens all over this a little late developing and good help also from Lexi Sun, the left side blocker. That is a choice that Bailey Choi might want to have back. The right side was pretty open. Move Josia over on to the left. Stuff block on the outside by Lexi Sun. She always has been number 11 in white. Lexi Sun, 6'2 junior out of the San Diego area. Always been a really good blocker. 19-17 is the lead. Yep, she can be really good against the slide, but Hawaii doesn't run any slide with their two-setter offense. So now she's just blocking right side hitters. Service winner for Nebraska. And head coach Robin Amo in her third year leading the University of Hawaii Rainbow Wahine team. Calls a timeout. Nice streak by Nebraska to take the 20 to 17 advantage. You know, we're certainly in Big Ten country at Wisconsin. They were dominant, although they really had to battle against Texas A&M earlier this afternoon. 2015, look at that, Karts. One, two, three, four, five, six teams out of the Big Ten make it to the regionals. In 2016, you can take it from there. The trend, there is no question that over the last decade that the Big Ten Conference has been the very best in the country. Remember, in the regionals, there are only 16 teams, so we keep counting. Six, six, six. It's pretty good again, percentage. Six. So it's almost half of the remaining teams are from the Big Ten Conference in those that we saw this year one short only only five teams in the regionals this year for the Big Ten. Wisconsin is trying to advance as is Penn State. Purdue was eliminated earlier today by the number one overall seeds from Baylor. Pac-12 also very well represented except two of their top representatives. Washington congratulations to Keegan Cook and the Huskies. They have moved on but Utah and Stanford will meet later today. Only one of the two going to be remaining after today. That's a tough break for the Pac-10 that they're going to have to face each other in the regional semifinals. What do you think about Penn State and Cincinnati in the bottom half of that Stanford regional. Well, Penn State would have played Pittsburgh a third time. They played and split matches earlier in the season, but Cincinnati upsetting Pittsburgh. I would favor Penn State. Jordan Thompson having a great year with Cincinnati, but Coach Rose and the Nittany Lions do a really nice job of preparing for opponents and shutting down the major offensive weapons across the net. Two outstanding sophomore middle blockers, Johnny Parker, 
Yeah. A young setter who's outstanding, and then Kendall White at the Libero just sort of manning yeah. everything that happens in the backcourt. Yeah, Penn State is really solid again. Nice play and response by Skylar Williams out of the middle, but the Huskers have gone out to a 21 to 18 lead. McKenna Ross back to serve for Hawaii. And she, last time up, got an ace on Cubic down the line. I would expect her to go down this same sideline at Cubic. Better good pass that good time. response by Cubic and Lexi Sun going off speed. Nice pokey by Williams, the middle blocker. That was not a necessarily good. Didn't you think that set was too tight? Lexi Sun got on her horse, got on that ball. And she had a smaller blocker in front of her in Yosia. So she can take a few more chances with the height advantage and the jump advantage that she has. Nebraska with a comfortable lead here. Some separation at 22-18, perfect pass. And Williams responds, but missed that ball over the sideline. Hawaii trying to get their middles going. They've got a lot of good passing to work with, but we saw the huge stuff from Stiffens earlier, and then some hitting errors on a couple of those other attempts. Hawaii hitting negative here in the second set after being so solid in the first. Seven kills make it eight kills, eight errors. Now an error in volleyball statistics, you hit a ball out of bounds or you were blocked on your own side for a point. So now Hawaii is hitting zero in the second set. Eight kills, eight errors. 23 to 19, here's the Libero Aquino. Very easy serve and handled like it was. And Schwarzenbach on the slide. Set points now for Nebraska. Hawaii's going to have to regroup. They were right there in the opening set. Nebraska needed three set points to win it 29-27, but it has been all Nebraska here in the second. Ripped into the cross court. Nice dig by Knuckles and cannot be played. Right on top of the net. IGD was there making sure <laughs> if that ball <laughs> crossed the net by a centimeter, she was going to hammer that number three in black. But so that's an intimidating save. Absolutely. I was intimidated sitting over here. <laughs> is enough to make that ball fall. Set point number two. You'll see it. Noreen, you'll see a good jump serve back at the line. Ripped it down the line. Jazz Sweet is blocked by GD once again. Set point number three. Nebraska actually has four passes ready. Unusual. That's the respect they're showing the Yosia serve. Nice pass. Right on target to Knuckles and a better block by GD. Nebraska's got to call timeout here. That is three set points saved. And as I thought, Nebraska head coach John Cook is going to slow things down. Good job by Hawaii. Did I say the lead was comfortable? You, <laughs> no, you've, no ta lead. <laughs> you've taught me never to say that. No lead is comfortable. We've seen some of the most amazing comebacks. You saw that one 9-3 in the fifth game yeah, earlier yeah. this year. I think a Florida and A&M was up. What about what about last week? Rice and Texas A&M. Texas A&M was up 14 to 5. Uh, actually 15 to 4 and still lost that first one. But then they were down 23 19 and came back to win <laughs> the second 32 to 30. So Crazy I will games. I will strike the word comfortable <laughs> from my vocabulary from now on. Comfortable is when you're on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> the whistle is long done. Shaking hands. <laughs> Shaking hands. You're on the bus on the way back to the hotel knowing you're going to play tomorrow. Baylor has won. They will take on Washington tomorrow. Washington has been to the national semifinals. They have won a national championship. Baylor looking to get to a regional final for the first time in history. So congratulations to the Huskies and the Bears. Wisconsin has moved on and Texas right now in a real dogfight with Louisville. Louisville up two sets to one. Texas leading in the fourth, seven to four in what will of course be a sold out Gregory Jim. Wonderful atmosphere there as well.
The Longhorns have done a tremendous job, as has Minnesota, as has Penn State, as has Nebraska, as has, of course, Wisconsin, and putting a lot of fans in the seats. We talked about Stanford, Utah. We haven't talked too much about Minnesota, Florida. Minnesota got their setter, Kylie Miller, back. She had been out for many more weeks than they had hoped. Came back and her first match back fell down a quick 2-0 to Nebraska. Come storming back. There's another strange result. 15-3 they lose yeah, in the fifth, yeah. but they're happy to have the setter. They plan to run a lot of the season. Oh, wow. How can you do that on set point? You cannot block the set. The pass was absolutely perfect. IGD has been wonderful, the 6'3 freshman out of Louisiana, but just a little too anxious. Easy play to call. Yep, you cannot, whoa, she's way, way over, over. Way, way over. Cannot take that ball away from the setter for Nebraska. You have to figure out a way to keep your hands on your own side of the net in that so situation. It took four set points, but Nebraska able to close it out. I won't say comfortable. Nebraska has a two sets to none lead. Welcome back to the Madison, Wisconsin Regional. The host Badgers have already moved on. They're the number four seeds. May be destined to play Nebraska for the third time this year. Very, very close opening set. Nebraska came back to win it 29-27 and won the second 25-22. Nebraska, can they get to a national semifinal for the fifth time? Would not be a record, but so far under Coach John Cook, they have had a wonderful run of late. I guess the lesson is you don't want to be number one seed. <laughs> <laughs> that Go and get a four or a five and you might have a shot. Coach John Cook looking back at his resume in his very first year at Nebraska in 2000, won a national championship. Then with Jordan Larson, one of the great players in American history and a part of your Olympic team in 2006. And then 15 and 17 behind several wonderful players. And of course, Michaela Fecky back with Karch Karat. I'm Paul Sunderland. Your thoughts on how Hawaii, can they dig themselves out of this hole after having an opportunity in set number one and then coming back from a 6-1 deficit in set number two? I think Hawaii had its best chance in the first set. Yep. There were a couple of plays. First of all, they served out at set point. Yosia tried a different serving location to start from and had a ball or two that they didn't get a swing out of. But they've tried some different things. I give Coach Amo a lot of credit. They tried Rasmussen. She still isn't in right, her midseason right. form, but they're going to have to clean it up a little. They're a really pesky team and really fun to watch. Great first touch, great hustle, but they're going to have to take it up a notch. The block of Nebraska is getting the better of them so far. Nebraska, like so many other programs around the country, have themes, and Coach John Cook spends a lot of time with the sports psychologists and Climbing Mount Everest, it's always, you've already dumped me off at about 8,000 feet, so forget about getting to 29. But it's 29,000, 29 feet, and that last 29 feet is always the most difficult. Who's willing to do what it takes to get to the top, to get across the finish line? And the other part of the theme is unfinished business. And I do like the yodeling in the background. It really sets a particularly <laughs> nice tone to this feature. That was nice of you, Brad. There. They were right there, just three points short in that final against Stanford, 15-12 yep. in the fifth. To be continued, that was a magnificent championship match last year. Congratulations to the Stanford Cardinal, who we've talked about a lot when Catherine Plummer got hurt. We've talked about them a lot when she came back. What do you think their chances are to defend their championship? Well, they got to be happy to be on home court three years ago, they beat Wisconsin on Wisconsin's court, yes. this very court after falling down 2-0. That's going to help. And the more matches Stanford can get under its belt with these two regional matches, the more Plummer gets reintegrated after being out for a number of weeks, the two-time reigning National Player of the Year. As wonderful a player as Catherine Plummer is, and you talk about Dana Retke, when you talk about Stanford or Wisconsin or Nebraska or Hawaii, it's about balance. You have to have weapons right around the dial, and all three of those teams do. Texas does as well, yep. but they're really struggling so far today. It looks like they might be able to even this match at two sets apiece. And when you're talking balance, we saw a great exhibition of that earlier today. Wisconsin threats from all five of their primary weapons. Dana Retke was 14 of 21, no errors. 
Nebraska, the number five seed. Hawaii, the number 12 seed. Hawaii 26 and three on the year. The champions of the Big West Conference trailing two sets to none. Yosia misses the first serve. We talked about Nebraska getting back to the NCAA National Semis for the fifth time. Stanford did it consecutively from 1982 to 1987. UCLA. You're a proud Bruin from 1988 to, to 1992 and Texas from 2012 when they won the national championship to 2016. That ball blocked out of the middle by Schwarzenbach and a slow start here once again for Hawaii. And Penn State falling just one short but they did something even better winning four times in a row Penn State 2007 8 9 and 10 I'm sure they'll be happy to take those four titles instead of the five semis. Good rip into the cross court dug by Hames. Free ball coming got to watch out for the scoreboard. Helvig again going high flat you talked about the Nebraska block and they have really keyed in. What a good save by Hames not once early in the rally but twice. Tough ball to dig. That ball did not have a lot of spin on it. Nice off speed. Boy, Lexi's son has really improved her variety of shot, and she can bring the heat as well. The way Hames makes that play, both of them, both Hames and Sweet, great touches on the ball. But the way Hames gets that is by getting really low, and Lexi's son using this shot more effectively this season. That's why last year she hit. About 195 this year, 273, almost 80 points higher, and it's because of smart shots like that. You don't need to swing your hardest to get a kill every time, and in fact, you shouldn't. You should mix in variety. Van Sickle up into the block. Oh, what a nice shot into the cross court. Both Van Sickle and Helvig got off to a really good start. That's why the first set was so competitive. Yeah, these teams are so fun to watch. They both play so hard. See bodies flying all over that rally, the one before this. Just a final thought on Lexi Sun after this particular point. Tough swing for a left-hander. Jazz sweep, really good location to get Nebraska ahead in the point. Yeah, what a great swing for a lefty. Lexi Sun caught a piece of Okino. Ball going out of bounds, but Lexi Sun, you talked about her improvement, which is remarkable, but a reminder that she did that against Big Ten competition. Yeah. Best conference in the country by and, a lot. And remember also, she had to sit out for about eight months yep. in 2018 after she transferred from Texas. So it was a long time coming, and she was barely ready to join back into conference play in the 2018 Big Ten season. She got a full lead up to this season as a much healthier player. Hawaii misses out of bounds and the Rainbow Wahine need a timeout against Nebraska here in the third. Welcome back once again to NCAA Women's College Volleyball. The tournament coming your way on ESPNU and ESPN3. Back with U.S. Olympic team head coach Karch Kirat. Nebraska the number five seed on top of Hawaii the number 12 seed. Two sets to none and 5-1 here in the third. And Lexi Sun has been absolutely superb. Hitting 5.33 so far on the early evening. Nice rip down the line. Nice up. What a save. Jazz sweet. And off the block and out of bounds. Aquino doing a wonderful job of knowing where you are in the court. And Haynes coming up with a shot down the line. I'm surprised that Nebraska has not adjusted. We're seeing so much line swing, both from McKenna Ross and from Brooke Van, Zick Van Sickle, the two left side hitters for Hawaii. Sweet again on the cover, free ball coming. Hawaii needs to convert on all of these opportunities. Good soft touch by Kubik. And that's going to be a center line violation called against Nicklin Haynes. That's the problem with pushing your first defensive touch too close to the net. Nicklin Haynes is running from deep in the court. 
by a sideline and you see right there good shot her foot under the net because her momentum she's traveling 20 feet just to make that play you have to give her five feet of cushion so she can so she can avoid going under the net and causing danger like that nice response by Hawaii they were trailing 5 1 at the timeout 3 nothing run a lot of times the officials like to ignore that call but if there's player safety involved and there was a Hawaii player in the proximity so that's a good call got to make that call nice. nice dig by knuckles what a good read and Hawaii right back at you Van Sickle in the backcourt, but a wonderful swing by Matty Kubik. We'll update you on the numbers in the match. Sun leading the way with nine kills. Jazz Sweet with nine. Matty Kubik now with five, but doing it all. Van Sickle with ten kills for Hawaii. McKenna Ross with nine. Helvig has cooled off quite a bit. She had five kills in the opening set. Now with only six. Oh, that ball's on the sideline. What a good shot. Off speed once again by Kubik. Who you oh, think, that's Karch more like a senior shot. Yeah, that is yeah. not a freshman yeah. shot, except if you're the Big Ten freshman of the year. What a smart play. You think she's the national freshman of the year? She, you know, when you do as much as she has done for her team in the Big Ten Conference, we just went through a few minutes ago how many teams they keep having in the regionals every year. I'd say she's the odds on favorite playing six rotations playing good defense wonderful first contact serve receive hits for a good efficiency Hits smart here is Cuban excuse me this is uh, knuckles and a good touch by cubic on the block to create a scoring chance working on Van Sickle Nickel and Hames but a block touch on the net is going to be called against Nebraska and the All-American Stiverens number 26 in white a break for Van Sickle and Hawaii. Bailey Choi the transfer from the University of Utah on to serve. Utah and Stanford coming up later. That'll be on ESPNU and should be quite a contest overpass. And right on the sideline nice play by McKenna Ross Johnny on the spot and that's exactly where the Hawaii bench was signaling they want the serve to go so Nebraska now passing with two they pull Lexi Sun out actually they pull Jazz Sweet into the formation well, but they take Lexi Sun out of there after Hawaii targeted her nice hustle again by the Wahine. Oh, and oh, the ball drops. A kill out of the back row. Underhanded by Bailey Choi. Saw that her team was, or is that was that Van Sickle, saw that her team was in complete disarray and just shoveled that ball over to Nebraska, and they weren't ready. Well, you have the one touch. They had another touch, but that caught. That's a play that works in <laughs> club volleyball. That's not supposed to work against... <laughs> The Nebraska Cornhuskers. Smart serve, getting the ball on Jazz Sweet. Cubic ripping into the cross court. Nice dig. Nice cover. And cut shot. One good cut shot. Deserves another. Noreen Yosia, the most valuable player in the Big West Conference. Four times, first team all conference. Slice and dice <laughs> right off. The beach, nice play by Hawaii. Really good crowd, sold out for the Wisconsin match. An update on the Texas score. Texas looks like they're going to even this match against Louisville, 23-17. But for some bad news on the Texas side, Karch, at 21-13, Asia O'Neill, starting middle blocker for the University of Texas Longhorns, landed on All-American outside hitter Makaya White and was carried off the floor. Texas very fortunate that they have a great backup in Molly Phillips been coming in. She came in in the Baylor match, helped turn that around. They didn't win, but they were down 2-0 and came back, helped them turn it around against UC Santa Barbara last Saturday. And played some exceptional volleyball early in the yeah. season when Breon Butler was, with, was uh, out with an ankle injury. She had 11 kills in the lo losing effort at Stanford. Longhorns fortunate to have such depth at that position. Tied at eight. Here's Stiverens on the left again. 
and making a pretty good swing. I mean, Lawrence Difference has a bright future. Maybe on the <laughs> Olympic team in due course. Maybe they're making her an opposite or an outside hitter. Going to tell them to start training her how to pass the ball. Wow, that is really <laughs> interesting. I think she's two for two on the left. Nebraska back on top by one. Miller on to serve. Good touch by Stiverance. Down the line, but into the antenna and out of bounds. You got to give Stiverance credit. She gets that first touch, but some of the stuff blocks she has earn extra points. Hitters avoiding her. In that case, Coach Cook giving her a lot of credit. He's been working with her and with Nicklin Hames a lot since January, trying to develop their leadership skills. So they're co-captains now. And you might remember when they were playing Minnesota in that Big Ten match, they, they went, go up 2-0. Minnesota then thrashes them in games three and four. And in the huddle before the fifth, Lawrence Diverns took over. No coaches were there and helped inspire them to a 15-3 fifth set win. Stiverance again ripping down the line and yesterday we were again at practice and Lauren Stiverance was going through the paces and a very brisk and uh, challenging practice for Nebraska and I said you want another shot at Wisconsin she just looked over at me and said you're darn right I do <laughs> but then of course realized that they said you know like Hawaii is a great team we got to think about of course them first. of course of course I just asked her if they wanted another shot yeah. at Wisconsin. <laughs> and if you're wondering, Wisconsin played the most difficult Big Ten schedule. It's unbalanced because there are 14 teams in the Big Ten. But they played all of the top teams. Penn State, Nebraska, Minnesota played them all twice and came out on top 18-2. and two. And beat this very strong Husker team 3-0 both times. I wouldn't expect that to happen again if, Huskers, if the Huskers go on to win today. And the two teams play a third time tomorrow. And of course, one of those was in Lincoln, Nebraska, a place where teams go to die. <laughs> Nebraska on top 12 10, up two sets to none. Here is Densberger. Well, Hawaii continues to pass very well. You'll see uh, again down the line. Give you a quick update from the Texas Regional. And we are going to play five. Louisville putting a huge scare into Texas, who again was right up against it last week against UC Santa Barbara. Had to go five to eliminate the Gauchos, who had a wonderful tournament. Jump serve coming from Yosia. Beautifully handled by Knuckles. Maybe a little too tight for Hames. Tight ball kept alive by Yosia, but another missed opportunity for Hawaii. Kenzie Knuckles, the freshman libero for Nebraska, is doing an outstanding job, and it was really questionable for a period of time. She committed, like a lot of players do, she committed very young to Nebraska. Had some family struggles. She lost her dad when she was only 15, and Coach Cook was telling us yesterday that she completely fell off the map, stopped playing junior volleyball. And AWOL. He couldn't get in touch with her, and finally she came to Lincoln, and Coach Cook met with Knuckles and said, look, we want you to come. We're still here for you, but if you don't want to play, you got to tell us. You got to tell us because we demand a lot here at Nebraska. Kenzie Knuckles recommitted. She's gone on and she started for at the Libero position for Nebraska. Yeah, he said, look, she's a great young woman. We don't want to give up on somebody like that. Those were exactly his words. Hawaii trailing by only one. Lexi Sun again. Lexi Sun, 11 kills on 17 swings, only one error. We've talked about it before. It's a personal preference, cards. We call an error a ball hit out of bounds. I wish they didn't include blocks. It gives no credit to the block. It shouldn't be solely a hitting error. And that was her only one. Remember, she took one swing that wasn't as smart as many of the ones we've seen. She got stuffed. Knuckles with a dig right on target, but the timing not there to Jazz Sweet. Good play by Sun to cause trouble. She gets her team a free ball back. Hawaii continues just to be in great spots defensively, as is Nebraska. Hames with a dig. 
Jazz sweet into the cross court, but just out of bounds. Linesman right in front of us called it out. Remember, remember now, Nebraska only has one challenge remaining. And Coach Cook, he can't find the challenge card. <laughs> it's the bright green thing. That was very, very close. In live action, we don't have a great view from our table. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, that's in. in that live ball's action. in. That ball's in. Couldn't even see it. And all of Sweet's teammates, Sweet is having a really good match as well. All of Sweet's teammates immediately indicated that ball was in. Remember, they wasted one of their challenges when their middle blocker, Kelly Schwarzenbach, netted but thought she didn't. And so they challenged and lost. But yeah. this looks clearly in. And when Hawaii is yeah, playing this in. well and this pesky, you got to get every point that you can. And for Jazz Sweet, that will be her 10th kill when they correct this. That ball yeah. clearly in. Karch, again, in international volleyball, if you're correct on your challenge, you keep it. You get two per set. But basically, if you're good with your challenges, you have an unlimited number. If you were going to change in college volleyball the current rule, because it's such a penalty. You're correcting, you're correcting a mistake by the officials. And that's and what's yet, so frustrating to yeah, coaches. Yeah, and then you are penalized by having to burn a challenge to get, quote, the score right. It's rally scoring. Every missed call is a point for your opponent. Maybe a better solution, and I've, I haven't heard all the ideas out there, but I'm sure there are a lot of them, is maybe as you get one per set, but as long as you keep getting it right, you, could, you still have one available in that yeah, set. Yeah. I know there's a worry with all of the broadcast games there are now, probably over 100 in the course of a season, that these games can last too long with virtually unlimited challenges. Because some of them we've seen can take a really long time. Great cover by Hawaii. Aquino on the cover and on the dig. Rasmussen is back on, still trying to shake off the rust. Boy, Hawaii and Nebraska dig a lot of balls. Good set in transition, Jazz Sweet. Smart Wait. play, smart play getting the ball on Hames. Mm -hmm. Momentum point for either team. Jolie Rasmussen out for 10 weeks, just back in after suffering a severe, severe ankle sprain. You can see her left ankle and calf all bandaged and taped up. That was really a good swing, and Hawaii really had to have it. Yeah, and she's taking some more comfortable swings on the right than we saw her, her first swing on the left, late in the first set. So smart call by Coach Amo to now play her at the opposite position. And they pull back to within one, down 15-14. Easy play to call, double contact against Hames. That ball drifts just out of bounds. Looking at some of the defensive numbers, Hawaii has dug 48 balls. They're getting a lot of point scoring opportunities. We don't have the number, but they have got to get much more efficient at hitting and scoring in transition. Nebraska, they've got 38 digs in their column as Knuckles is back at the line. Tough serve going five to five. Free ball. No, look at that. We have a bump kill <laughs> by Van Sickle, and now a beautiful shot into the deep cross court corner. That was McKenna Ross. And you're seeing the sand volleyball, the beach volleyball yeah. influence when you will have to put plays over like this. And if you haven't played much beach volleyball, you are going to get caught off guard. Really smart play by Ross. The Rainbow Wahine still very much welcome at the Outrigger Canoe Club. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and anywhere sand volleyball is played. Good pass. Good pass by Sun. That's yeah, a tough play. Williams hands off the net, deflected it away from her defenders. 17-15 is the Nebraska lead. The fifth set is underway in Austin, Texas. Louisville leading the number two seed Longhorns. Three to one right now. That's over on ESPNU. Third set here, Nebraska up two sets to none. Good serve by Miller. Nebraska's a good serving team. Knuckles. 
Boy, what a smart swing. McKenna Ross, we've talked about it. Brooke Van Sickle, 5'9". McKenna Ross, 5'10". And getting the job done off the edges. And the thing that made that play was McKenna Ross's first touch. It goes to her, she puts it high, gives herself time to get back off the net and get a proper distance approach toward the swing. Quebec, solid swing, solid block, but off the hands and out of bounds off of Williams. And Cubic will go back to serve. We'll update you on her number. Six kills on 26 swings. Offensively a little bit slower, but playing the all-around game. Van Sickle going in between the blockers and down there. Definitely going after Nicklin Hames. Hames at five foot ten, the sophomore out of Maryville, Tennessee. Yeah, and on this move, Stiverens, you can see she dives to her left, thinking, and we've seen Van Sickle hit some of those sharp angles, so Stiverens was playing the odds and going for the sharp shot, opening up some seam to attack. Well, what a, wow. That is a big time swing by Lexi Sun. 12 kills on 19 attempts, hitting Wait for the computer to change. <laughs> I'll round it to about 585. It's getting awfully wow. close to wow. 600. Really impressive. Stiverens will come out. Densberger will come on to serve. No Libero on the floor right now for Nebraska leading 1917. You almost had it right. 579. It's Lexi's son. What did I round to 580? Yeah, yeah, yeah 85. I, think you did. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt if I'm right when it comes to numbers. Van Sickle up into the block, cannot get it past Hames this time. And now the lead is three, 20 to 17. And I will not use the comfortable word <laughs> ever again. <laughs> not at least in this context. Timeout called by Hawaii. NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship coverage continues with the national semifinals. That's Thursday, December 19 at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. For more information on the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship, visit NCAA.com. Your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Quick Texas update. Asia O'Neill, who we were told was carried off, is back on the floor. There are the Texas A&M Aggies. What a wonderful year. Strong tournament they had before falling to the number four seed, Wisconsin Badgers. They played very well. Louisville on top. Louisville. Seven to three in the fifth. Wow. We've already, we've talked about it, Karch. This year there might have been eight teams that could win the national championship, but the depth every year of the quality of field just continues to grow and grow and grow. And that is being evidence. Cincinnati advancing, Louisville advancing, and maybe, maybe Louisville advancing again. And that's one of the things that has helped women's and men's basketball explode, especially the men, is anybody can lose to anybody. The number one has lost to the 64 now. And that's great for volleyball when there's more drama and less certainty about the outcome for even in the earliest rounds of the tournament. Baylor and Washington have advanced. They'll play tomorrow. Wisconsin is in. Will it be Nebraska or Hawaii? Stanford, Utah, Penn State, Cincinnati still to come. Louisville up on Texas and then Minnesota and Florida and got word that Thayer Hall is also now available to play after missing the first couple of matches for the Florida Gators. That is good news. Nice rip between the blockers once again, Van Sickle. Rasmussen will come back on. Yep, playing in the 6-2 offense as one of the two opposite hitters, playing for Helvi. Noreen Yosia, maybe the final chance for Hawaii with her back at the line. Remember back to the opening match? Really tight first set between Holland Hands, Texas A&M, and Wisconsin. Holland Hands missed a big serve there at the end, and eventually it turned into a sweep. Nicklin Hames back at the line. It's 21 to 18, Nebraska. Nice aggressive serve by Hames. 
And that's going to be a point missed on the coverage. I'm trying to remember whether or not Hawaii has a timeout left. Lexi son. Boy, did that have a good sound. And yet another shot in Sun's repertoire, and that time just high, hard wow. heat to the deep corner. Yep, Hawaii did have a timeout remaining. You can't take it with you. If their season should come to an end at the hands of the fifth-seeded Cornhuskers, Hawaii has had a marvelous season under the direction now of Robin Amo, the three-time Olympian. Oh, Hawaii is challenging. Um, okay, if you have a challenge left, you know, it can be somewhat disguised as a timeout. I'm guessing they wanted a little break and so challenged whether the hitter hit the net. But clearly, Lexi Sun no. wasn't anywhere near the net. Behind Lexi Sun, Nebraska's hitting 424 in this set, 299 overall. No, this is a magnificent swing right into the deep cross court corner. I do not blame Coach Amau for a moment. Use your challenge, use whatever is left to your devices. Slow things down and give your chance a team to uh, 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 give your team a chance to play on. Yeah, no question. Nebraska in the NCAA tournament for the 30, excuse me, into the regional for the 35th time, 38th tournament appearance. Trying to get back to their fifth straight national semifinal. Just two points, just one point away. Jazz Sweet has been superb as well. Really a good start offensively. Jazz Sweet, like Lexi Sun, two of the most improved players in the Big Ten Conference. Match points for Nicklin Hames. How good has Hames been at the defensive end? Unguarded, nice kill into the cross court by Hawaii. Yep, Tiffany Westerberg came in. They wanted a little different look on offense, ran the slide for the first time. Match point number two. Why not to Lexi Sun? What a spectacular performance in the third round by first team all Big Ten performer out of Encinitas, California, Lexi Sun. It has not been easy. Transferred from Texas after an honorable mention All American year, had some injury problems, couldn't play for a number of months. The transition to playing for Coach Cook and Nebraska on full display this afternoon against the University of Hawaii, whose season comes to an end. Lexi Sun just hit 619 against a really good volleyball team, particularly at the defensive end. 14 kills on 21 sinks. Absolutely superb. Yeah, coming into the season healthy and the work that she's done on her passing game and especially on her range and variety of shots, tools that she can use, weapons that she can use in her arsenal paid off big time for her tonight and a final congratulations to the Hawaii Rainbow Wahine they finished their year at 26 and 4 a conference championship led by three time Olympian Robin Amo continuing the tradition that Hall of Famer Dave Shoji put in place over four decades this is a team that really really plays solid volleyball both teams served really tough and both teams passed very very well indeed and so for the third time this year Lexi Sun who joins us now at the table will take on the Wisconsin Badgers Lexi congratulations thank you what a wonderful performance period look at my iPad 
Okay. 14 kills, 21 swings. You just hit 619 oh. against a really, really good team. What's this transition been like over these two years since you left Texas? And we see a, a new and different and improved Lexi Sun on display today. I think just having last year under my belt and getting to know how to play with Nick Lynn and all the other girls and just getting that, um, yeah, like I said, under my belt and using it and bringing and healthy. it into this year. How, how important and yes, is health? Yes, much more healthy, which is great. Yeah. Coach Cook talked about how you've been working on increasing your range and the amount of the different types of tools, weapons you can use right. as an attacker. Seemed like that was on display tonight. What, what's been your focus there? Yeah, we work on it every day at practice. Um, all the hitters work on it, and that's our goal. And we're hoping that the blockers don't know where we're going to hit the ball. So, yeah, um, we're all trying to make that our goal, and we did that tonight. All the hitters did that tonight, for sure. I asked your teammate, All-American Lawrence Difference, yesterday if she wanted another crack at Wisconsin. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh that's exactly what she oh, said. Yeah. <laughs> well, talk to us about that matchup. I think they're playing as well as anybody in the country right now, and mm. the field continues to shrink, but they're right. right there. Talk about the rematch against them, and what are the keys for you and your teammates? Yeah, obviously, they're a great team. Um, we're excited to get to play them again, and we're excited for tomorrow night, so now we're focused on that match. So. Lexi, congratulations. Thank you so a much. Magnificent performance Thank against you. a wonderful team from Hawaii. Yeah, they are sure. really, really good. So Nebraska wins it, and it wasn't easy, just like in the first match, A&M against Wisconsin. Lexi Sun and Nebraska advance against Hawaii. We'll be back to wrap things up from Wisconsin.